Retina Rounds, episode number 139, Giant Macular Hole. Giant macular holes, defined as a minimum linear diameter of greater than 1,000 microns, are a subset of macular holes that can be challenging to close and are generally associated with poor visual prognosis. Advanced surgical techniques are often necessary to close giant macular holes, including macular hydrodissection, human amniotic membrane grafts, and autologous retinal transplantation. Today's video shared by Dr. Ananya Kaginalkar, a final year senior resident in vitro retina, uvia, and ROP services at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences in New Delhi, India, demonstrates the amniotic membrane sandwich technique in a patient with a traumatic giant macular hole. It's an elegant surgery with a remarkable post-operative outcome. Let's check out the technique, and we want to thank Dr. Kaginalkar for sharing this case. Here's the patient's preoperative imaging. Again, this is a patient with a post-traumatic giant macular hole, which you can see on the fundus photo to the left and the OCT to the right. The minimum linear diameter is 1,096 microns, with a base diameter of 1,486 microns and a height of 225 microns. Based on the OCT biomarkers for macular holes discussed previously in episode 55, there are a number of features here associated with the low likelihood of closure including a macular hole index of less than 0.5, relatively flat macular hole edges with a minimal cuff, and no intraretinal fluid at the macular hole margin. Based on these features, think about how you might tackle this case. And let's see what Dr. Kaginalkar does. Okay, you can see that this is a 25 gauge parse plane of vitrectomy, and Dr. Kaginalkar is going to start by performing a core vitrectomy. Now some triamcinolone is introduced into the, uh, into the vitreous cavity over the posterior pole, uh, and this is swirled around just to confirm that the PVD has already uh, been induced. Now uh, a peripheral uh, vitreous shave is being performed with the assistance of scleral depression, and you can see here uh, in the supranasal quadrant uh, that there is a retinal dialysis, not an uncommon finding in a patient with significant ocular trauma. And so Dr. Kaginalkar is going to perform some endolaser around the margins of the uh, retinal dialysis, as well as some cryopexy. Now, a uh, uh, brilliant blue dye is being used to stain the ILM. So that's introduced over the posterior pole and then removed using the soft tip cannula. And you can see very nice staining of the ILM. Uh, using a high magnification contact lens and ILM forceps, you can see that this first uh, of uh, a number of ILM flaps is being fashioned. This is a very beautiful technique. Uh, and, and multiple flaps are created. You can see those flaps that are covering the macular hole. Now perfluorocarbon liquid is instilled over the posterior pole, and you can see here the human amniotic membrane. This has been stained with tripan blue, and the reason for the staining is uh, to allow the surgeon to identify the epithelium side, which is stained with the tripan. Uh, the chorion side, of course, is the side that you want to be uh, oriented towards the uh, RPE. So now this, uh, this amniotic membrane is then introduced into the vitreous cavity, and then with the assistance underneath the, per, uh, the perfluorocarbon liquid, that, um, that human amniotic membrane is placed into the macular hole, and you can see that those flaps are uh, brushed to the side to allow for this human, human amniotic membrane to be placed into the macular hole, and now the ILM flaps are being uh, placed over the uh, amniotic membrane, and this is what's uh, the so-called sandwich technique, and the purpose of this is the ILM flaps are not only going to help to stay stabilize the uh, amniotic membrane in the macular hole, preventing dislodgement, but it's also going to provide for some additional uh, framework uh, which uh, can encourage gliosis and closure of the macular hole. Now, complete air fluid exchange is performed, a, um, a C3F8 gas bubble is, um, is uh, implanted, and you can see here the post-operative outcome. This is the patient at post-operative week two, and we can see that there's a partially resorbed gas bubble with a type two closure of the macular hole seen on the uh, OCT scan to the right. And the uh, amniotic membrane appears to be plugging or bridging the macular hole, and it already appears that the distance between the margins of the neurosensory retina has diminished. Now here's the patient at post-operative week six, and you can see a remarkable progression of the hole closure in this case. Uh, you can certainly see a closure of the macular hole on the fundus photo, uh, but e even more impressive is the OCT uh, architecture shown to the right. In particular, I expanded the line scan number 10 at the bottom of the uh, frame here, which shows a type one closure uh, of the macular hole and restoration of the foveal contour. 
So we've reviewed uh, the closed study group publication previously, uh, but we want to show you here the breakdown of the closure rate and vision changes for holes of various sizes using different surgical techniques. Now the yellow bars on these graphs indicate the eyes with a giant macular hole, and you can see that ILM flaps, macular hydrodissection, and autologous retinal transplantation have closure rates in the 85 to 90 percent range. Human amniotic membrane transplants, on the other hand, have a 100% closure rate, although the type 1 versus type 2 closures and premacular versus submacular grafts are not specified. Now, vision gains appear to be highest with macular hydrodissection, followed by autologous retinal transplantation and human amniotic membrane grafts, although all three appear to have significant improvements in visual acuity. Now, based on weighing the goals of macular hole closure and the, a goal of vision gain, of course, uh, it makes sense to proceed with human amniotic membrane transplants. And Dr. Kaginalkar took this, to, this one step further by performing ILM peeling to not only uh, relax the inner retina, uh, but to cover the amniotic membrane using the sandwich technique to help prevent dislodgement of the graft and to serve as an additional scaffold for gliosis and macular hole closure. I think the anatomic improvement shown here is outstanding, especially given the patient's baseline anatomy. We want to thank Dr. Kaginalkar for beautifully demonstrating the surgical technique and for giving us all an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the surgical management of giant macular holes. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.